Welcome back to another episode of English Cooking, where I teach you English through cooking. Guys, today we've got a, a recipe that I think you're really going to like. It's called Chicken Fetus Salad. Smash like if you want to learn how to cook chicken fetus salad. The first thing you're going to need is a chicken fetus, okay? Now, some people call these eggs, but I like to call them chicken fetuses. Do you know what the word fetus means? Okay, the word fetus means an unborn baby. You used to be a fetus when you lived inside your mother's womb, right? That area inside your mother, like that, that sack inside your mother, that's called the womb, not womb. The B is silent, okay, womb. So this is like, I don't know, this, is this the womb? No. Do chickens have wombs? I'm not sure. But inside this egg is, is the fetus, right? So there's like a baby chicken hiding in here. But I'm going to eat the baby chicken before it, before it gets born. So, so that's the first thing you need, okay? You need a chicken fetus. Oh, now the word fetus can be spelled two ways. One way is a bit weird, okay? Very often the British spelling of words is a bit weird. So the British way to spell it is F-O-E-T-U-S. F-O-E-T-U-S, it kind of looks like foetus, 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 but it's pronounced fetus, right? Now, the American spelling is much simpler. Okay, it's F-E-T-U-S, fetus, just like you would expect it to be spelled, right? Fetus. You know, very often the American spelling is much simpler than the British spelling, right? Like the word like airplane. Do you know how to spell airplane? It's so easy, right? But for some reason, the British spell it like aeroplane, aeroplane. Whereas the American way, which is the way we spell it here in, in Canada, and I think we spell fetus. You know, sometimes in Canada, <laughs> Canada is kind of in the middle, in between the American and British. For some words, we spell the, the British way. For example, words um, like color or neighbor, we spell it like a word like color. C-O-L-O-U-R. We add an, a U. Whereas the Americans just take out the U and they just say, you know, C-O-L-O-R. You know, I think the American spelling is, is much simpler most of the time than the British. Right? Airplane is so easy. It's just air, plane. Aeroplane. I don't know what I don't know what the Brits are smoking over there. <laughs> if, you'd, if you're kind of confused about why someone is doing something weird, you can say, I don't know what they're smoking. What are you smoking? You know, if you, if, uh, if you were to tell me, hey, Mark, you know, 2 plus 2 equals 5, I would say, what have you been smoking? <laughs> right? It means you're kind of crazy. Okay, so that's the first thing you need. Chicken a chicken fetus, right? So we're just gonna pop this chicken fetus into the pot here just to get it cooking while I explain the rest of the ingredients. <clears throat> okay, just gonna pop the lid on there. Now the word pop, you hear I just used it twice, right? I said, let's pop this chicken fetus into the pot. We're gonna just pop the lid on. Pop is just a, it's just a kind of a slang way to say put, to put something, right? Like if, let's say this knife is dirty, by the way, this kind of a knife is called a cleaver, a cleaver, okay? So let's say this cleaver is dirty and I just want to just put it in the sink. I could say, I'm just going to pop this knife in the sink. Just pop it in the sink, All right? Or pop it in the dishwasher. I'm just going to give it a rinse, pop it in the sink or the dishwasher, whatever, right? So that's the word, the word pop. You know, very, very often we use that word in, in English in kind of slang, casual, a casual way. Okay, now let's move on to the rest of the ingredients. So we, we covered the first one, with it, which is a chicken fetus. Now the next one, you're going to need two kinds of radishes. Okay, so what is a radish? Well, a radish is these. These are radishes. Okay, this kind of radish is called a daikon radish. 
a daikon radish. Now it's kind of crazy to think both of these plants are related because they look completely different. <laughs> I mean, this one's massive. This, these are like small and red. This is a massive white thing, <laughs> right? But they're both radishes, right? So this one's called a daikon radish. These, are, this is, these are horse radishes. Horse radishes. I don't know why we use the word horse. I mean, does that look like a horse to you? It doesn't look like a horse to me. Welcome to English, my friends. Doesn't make any sense, but um, yeah. So uh, what we're gonna do? Oh, one more, one more ingredient. Forgot to mention is a sprig of cilantro. All right? Look at that nice sprig. Now the word sprig just means a little, um, a little piece of a plant, a part of a plant, usually with a leaf, like some 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 leaves or something like that. The whole bunch of cilantro. You know when you go to a store, you don't just buy one sprig, right? You buy a bunch. Usually has a rubber band around it or something, right? That's called a bunch. But if you just take off a little piece of the plant, that that's called a sprig. Okay, so very often recipes, you know, in uh, if you're cooking, I don't know, a soup or something, if, if, if there's a little if a recipe calls for just a little bit of something, you know, it might say a sprig. For example, like for herbs, you know, they're pretty strong, right? Like herbs like thyme or oregano or, um, you know, those, those kinds of, of, of herbs, sage, right? It might call for a sprig, a sprig of sage or a sprig of, of thyme or something like that, right? You're not going to put in a lot because it's, herbs are really strong, right? So yeah, you can use the word sprig. So this is just a sprig, a sprig of cilantro. Now here's another American British thing. In Canada and the US, we call this plant cilantro, but in the UK, they call it coriander. Now in this case, I think the British have it right. I think the water's boiling already. That was fast. So in this case, I think uh, the British are right. Why? Because this plant also produces seeds, which are called coriander seeds. Okay. <clears throat> so the British call this plant coriander and its seeds coriander seeds. Here in North America, we call this plant cilantro, but we still use the word coriander to talk about the seeds. So coriander seeds, you know, if you're cooking a recipe here in, um, in North America, the recipe will say, will call for coriander seeds. It won't say celery, or sorry, not celery. Celery is a different plant. It won't say cilantro seeds, right? But this leaf, the leaf, the leafy part of the plant is called cilantro here, but the seeds are still called coriander. So I think we got to hand it to the Brits. They win this one. But the Americans, I would say the Americans win the spelling. The Brits win more common sense with this plant, coriander. So, guys, that's all you're going to need. So let's, uh, let's take this daikon radish first. And what we're going to do is we are going to peel it. All right, so what you're going to need is a peeler. Look at that peeler right there. Do you have a peeler at home? So that's... Uh, it's called a peeler or a potato peeler. You know, most of the time when people use this thing, they, they use it to peel potatoes. So it's kind of, it might, some people might call it a potato peeler, but you know, you can peel carrots, you can peel anything. So we're just gonna start by, you know what, let's chop off this end first. Chop means to cut, all right? So we're gonna chop off this part of yeah, nice decoration. Can you see that? I'll put it right on the end of my cutting board here. It's a nice decoration. All right, so this thing is called a cutting board, right? You cut on the board. Most cutting boards are made of wood or plastic. All right, so um, there it is. That's what the inside of the daikon radish looks like. And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to peel it. Now guys, look at this. Look at this radish. 
it's <clears throat> it looks a bit wilted, doesn't it? Look at that. It's like kind of like it's almost like it's dead. It's wilted. It kind of looks like it's dying. You know, like when you see a tree, right? Imagine if a tree is really nice and green, right? It's fresh. It looks it looks good. But if if it doesn't get any water, or if it maybe gets too much sun or too I don't know if it's just if it's just gonna die if it's dying then it just kind of looks wilted, right? So this is this is what it kind of means to be to be wilted, right? If a person looks wilted, maybe their their shoulders are kind of slumped. So if your shoulders are like this, it's kind of, your shoulders are kind of slumped, right? You're kind of slumped over. So this kind of posture. It's kind of like you can describe it as slumped over, right? So if a kid is depressed in class, maybe the kid failed a test. Kids just sitting in class all slumped over. Are you slumped over today, my friends? I hope not. Hope you're chipper and uh, chipper means happy, right? Hope you're chipper and healthy. Just excited about life. You know, thank you guys so much for joining me in this video. Hopefully these videos cheer you up. Hopefully you learned some new words. Give me a like if you've learned any new words already. If you haven't learned any words, I better work harder. Better try harder. Okay, so another word for wilted, another way you could say it is withered. Okay, so there's two W words, right? Wilted and withered. Both of those basically have the same meaning, right? If, some, if something looks withered, like a tree, it just means it looks kind of like old and dying. Or if a tree is wilted, you know, it's, I don't know, it's suffering somehow, right? So if a person is wilted, you know, very often they just, you can see it on their face, their shoulders, they're kind of just, you know, maybe they're suffering in some way. Maybe they need some water, give them some life, right? If a tree is, is dying, probably most of the time it needs some water, it needs some life. Force, right so this this daikon radish looks a bit wilted a little bit withered right so um, but anyway I think it's still smells like a radish all right so we're gonna peel it um, so just gonna take your peeler wow the skin is really leathery right when something gets wilted very often the skin kind of gets like it gets soft and um, it's, 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 it's kind of tough, right? We can use the word leathery, kind of like a snake's skin. You can describe a snake's skin as leathery, right? So this, 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 look at that. It's not even peeling. Wow. Look at that. It's just, just not even, <laughs> guys, that's how withered, that's how wilted this thing is. All right, look at that. It's, it's not even not even peeling properly. All right, well, I'm just gonna have to press really hard when I peel it. All right, so we're not gonna use the whole thing anyway. We're just gonna use a few slices. Come on. All right. And then we're gonna, we're gonna peel this one, but not the horseradish, okay? The horseradish, we're gonna leave the skin on and we're just going to slice it up. Okay, so let's only peel that much of the radish. And we're gonna take this peel, just put it over there somehow. Now we're gonna just make a few slices and then we're gonna start putting it into our little bowl here, all right? So you want a few slices of daikon radish, all right? So Depends how hungry you are. Right? If you're really hungry, you might want like 10 or 20 slices. If you're not very hungry, you might just want a few slices. Okay, so we're just going to put, we're going to put five slices of daikon radish. We're going to set this aside. Right? If you put something to the side, you can say, I set it aside. I right? think like if your schedule is too busy, you know, maybe you need to set something aside um, and then focus on what you really want to do. You know, sometimes people get so involved in their work, just get so busy, just they need to set their work aside for a little bit. 
and uh, have some fun, right? Just like you're doing right now. You're having fun watching this video. What's that? You're not having fun. Hmm. Well, you need to eat a horseradish. Now that'll be fun for you. Okay, so <clears throat> look at that. It's so tiny compared to the, the daikon radish. Man, that's so crazy. So we're just gonna slice up this uh, horseradish, okay? Now horseradish is uh, is a very common food, you know. You you find horseradish in uh, in a lot of a lot of um, dishes, right? Because it's kind of a you don't find too much of it. It's it's a very strong food, right? If you if you eat a whole horseradish, it's like a strong food. It's it's just gonna make your it's gonna burn your mouth, right? It's a, it's a very strong food like garlic. If you eat raw garlic, right, it burns your mouth. Well, the same with um, with like horse with radish. Now, wasabi, guys. I'm not sure about this. Let me know down in the comments. What is wasabi made out of? You know what people eat with their sushi, right? That green paste. When you go to a Japanese restaurant and you order sushi, I love wasabi. <laughs> it tastes really good. But you know, it just like it just goes right to your brain. That feeling of just like right. It's, what is wasabi? Why is it green? What is it made of? Uh, is it made of, of radishes, horserad? I, I don't know, it's a very strong, it's a very similar taste to, uh, to radishes. Okay, so we're just gonna put on, put some uh, horseradish into our bowl there. We're actually, we're gonna cut up, um, let's add another, another uh, horseradish, right? So we're just gonna cut it up like normal into slices, right? This is what it means to slice something. Right? So there's a, there's a slice of horseradish. Don't you love that color? It's like a, a really deep purple, kind of a, yeah, reddish purple color. I really like, like that color. Okay, so there we have the, the, the radish mix, the mix of radishes, right? The two kinds of radish, daikon radish, and horseradish. Okay, now let's check on our egg. Oh, I just used the word egg. I meant chicken fetus. Let's check on our chicken fetus. <laughs> All right, I think it's done. We're just gonna we're just gonna uh, turn off the the gas stove there. Now, what did I do with my sprig, guys? Where did I put my oh? Put my sprig over here, sprig of cilantro. And we're gonna put this on last, just so it looks kind of a nice, give that green on top, right? So we're just gonna dump out, there it is, right? Hopefully it's finished cooking. Now I need to, uh, let's just crack it here. Let's see, and then we're gonna peel the egg, just like we peeled the horseradish, but we're not gonna use a peeler. I don't think it would work on an egg. So this is what it, it, this is what it's, uh, what it uh, means to peel an egg, okay? You just kind of peel it, guys, it's hot. Ah, it's burning my fingers. <sighs> That's too hot. I'm sure the little baby chicken is dead by now, don't you think? Let me know, do you guys love eating chicken fetuses? Let me know down in the comments. I, I do. Uh, actually, I've stopped eating meat because meat is so expensive here in Canada, guys. You know, chicken, beef, it's so expensive. So I have stopped eating meat and I, I buy eggs. So that's this is my source of protein because eggs are much cheaper than meat. If you go to Canada, if you come to Canada here, guys, a pack of chicken, it's it's so expensive. It's outrageous. Like you pay for like five chicken breasts. For five chicken breasts, it's like maybe fifteen dollars. Minimum probably twelve dollars. Or uh sometimes I, I've seen I've seen it probably as high as twenty or twenty-five dollars. It depends on the store you go to. Got some white stuck onto the shell. 
right, this, this white part of the egg is called the egg white. In the middle of the egg is the egg yolk. So some of the white, we lost it on the shell, guys. It's all right. Now we're gonna slice up our egg. We're gonna cut our egg into some nice slices here. There's some shell, right? That part is called the shell, the hard part. All right, we're gonna slice the chicken fetus. Ooh, look at that. See, there's the yolk. Yolk is nicely, nicely cooked. We're gonna slice it and then we're going to put it into the salad bowl, all right? Now on top, look at there, there we have our, our bowl and on top we're gonna put our sprig of cilantro. Look at that beautiful recipe right there, guys. Chicken feed a salad. Now that's not done yet. We're going to do something a little bit crazy. Add a dash of cayenne pepper. Look at that. Some, some, some cayenne pepper. Now cayenne pepper, look at that. It's a kind of a spicy, kind of red powder. Pepper is called cayenne pepper. Mm. Okay, now we're going to add a dash of it. Now what is a dash? I'll show you what a dash is. That's a dash. Okay, so very often recipes call for a dash of something. <clears throat> You know, it could be a dash of um, a dash of cinnamon, right? If you're making coffee, you know, very often people like to put cinnamon on their coffee, especially if it's like Christmas time or let's say you have a nice hot cup of hot chocolate. Right? You might put a dash of a dash of cinnamon or a dash of um, maybe even sugar. I don't know. What 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 do, what do people put put a dash of? Usually, like spice, some kind of a so something to kind of give it some flavor, right? So like you could put a dash of salt, probably. If, a, if salt is in a salt shaker like this, you could call it a dash. But very often, um, if you're cooking, it will rather, it will call for a pinch of salt, right? Remember um, in my first episode, or was it the second episode? I can't remember. We, we ground up salt and pepper in my mortar and pestle. You want to watch the first episode it's up here in my English cooking playlist all right so let's add another dash okay of of cayenne pepper Ooh, that's gonna be nice and spicy all right guys there it is there it is super simple there's a chicken feed a salad you know what I should just uh, take a picture of this let's take a picture of this and post it on Instagram how to cook chicken fetus salad. All right, if you're not following me on Instagram, guys, I'm posting all my recipes, all my English cooking, um, like pictures and stuff like that over on my Instagram. So thank you guys so much for, for following me on Instagram. I really appreciate it. And um, well, there it is, guys. That's it. Chicken fetus salad. So let me know, do you love eating? Have you ever eaten chicken fetus salad? Do you love radishes? Do you love cilantro? What's your favorite food? So for me, I love this, something like this. Just a nice simple dish. Nice to eat some chicken fetuses every now and then. Get some protein, build some muscle. So guys, I think that's it for this recipe. Look at this nice design. Isn't that nice? It's almost like a little Christmas tree right on the end of my cutting board here. Well guys, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me in this in this episode. Oh, here's a quiz. What's this knife called? Let me know down there in the comments. All right, I'll tell you. It's called a cleaver. A cleaver. So guys, have a great day. Stay happy, stay healthy. As always, I love you guys so much. And hey, I'll see you over in the next episode of English Cooking. Take care. Thank you